Good evening, Zimbabwe. This is Change Radio News. Today is Thursday, 3 October 2024. And the news read by Barbara Gwangwara. Here are the news headlines. President Chamisa calls for complete Zimbabwe's transformation. Citizens say Munangaba's state of nation address SONA is empty as it does not address the country's problems. Citizens upset with a selective treatment of law as the innocent Avondel 64 are still denied bail. And now for the news in detail. President Jason Chamisa stressed yesterday that Zimbabwe needs real political change, not just a new currency. He explained that people must trust the government for the currency to be successful. President Chamisa warned that simply introducing a new currency won't fix the country's problems if political issues are not addressed. He noted that past currencies have failed because of poor leadership. He called on citizens to support the need for political change, saying that true trust in leaders is crucial for improving the economy. He emphasized that Changing the currency alone won't bring prosperity and aid for a complete transformation to help the nation thrive. Citizens across the country have said that yesterday's state of nation address does not address the country's problems. Ms. Mnangagwa did not give any information that shows his seriousness on stabilizing the economy. Our reporter Kokelani Kame spoke to Honorable Jefferson Chitando and Honorable Hadeve Tabo. Let's hear more from them. The whole state of address by Munangagwa was basically full of sound and fury signifying nothing, there was nothing tangible to solve the problems of Zimbabwe, but it was only a talk show. While the country is facing unprecedented uh, crisis in education, health, financial sector, roads, in nearly every sector of the economy, it is down. Bunagaba couldn't give solutions to these problems. What surprised many was that Bunagaba still believes and still has got hope that the Ziggy uh, or the local currency has got hope to solve Zimbabwe's monetary crisis, but the general people in the streets no longer accept the ZIG as a form of money. So one wonder if Munangaba is real in touch with what is happening in the country or he was playing his jokes as he normally does a guy Murio Nama Potato Those are some of the jokes which we know Munangagwa so we think he is also playing jokes with the economy. Economists have stated that the devaluation of the ZIG currency is a misguided move as it solves nothing and creates additional problems for the government workers who are paid in local currency. The deteriorating economic situation has caused panic buying, leading to shops limiting the number of goods an individual can buy at a time.
Speaking to Change Radio today, Member of Parliament from Bizo Constituents, Honorable Kabon Madziwanyika said the devaluation has caused panic and eroded people's savings. Let's hear him speaking to Change Radio. The recent devaluation of the Zimbabwean currency, the ZIG, by the Central Bank on the 27th of September 2024 has actually uh, created the unprecedented and far-reaching consequences to the general uh, lives of uh, ordinary Zimbabweans. Uh, what it therefore literally means is that uh, if we, you used to buy two loaves of bread with 20 zig, now you can't buy two loaves of bread with 20 zig. You can now afford to buy one uh, loaf of bread with 20 zig because the exchange rate has been devalued by almost half of um, its purchasing power. Then what does that literally mean to the, the, the pensioners? Because we need to know the effect of this to, 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 to our pensioners, number one. It means it is going to uh, erase all their lifetime savings, leaving our pensioners exposed and vulnerable uh, to become uh, destitute. Number two, the recent devaluation also reduced the purchasing power of their current uh, payouts. If they used to get 400 zig, it means the, what they used to buy with 400 zig has been uh, uh, actually decimated by almost half. Look at the salaries of civil servants. What is the implication to our civil servants? It also means that our, the salaries of our civil servants has also been decimated by almost 50% or half of uh, the previous purchasing uh, ability. And it also means increased cost of living. It's now expensive uh, to, 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 to buy the same uh, basket that you used to enjoy before the change of, uh, uh, of devaluation. So, what does it mean, even for business? It means that imports are now expensive. Uh, only exports uh, become relatively competitive, but the imports are now expensive. So those who are importing, uh, be rest assured that it's not going to be easy for you uh, on the market. So the implication of this is that the people have been they've lost value, like what they've done again in 2018 when the government introduced SIA February of 2019, where they devalued the local currency. What it actually means is that those who have borrowed. It's not easy to pay because you, are, you pay when, you, when, you, when, you, when the, uh, the purchasing power of the has been eroded by almost half of it. So, what are we saying? What is the implication and what are we saying to the people of Zimbabwe and also policymakers? We are urging policymakers, particularly the Minister of Finance, to ensure that they restore the salaries of civil servants. Because they are the most, uh, the worst affected, civil servants and the pensioners are the worst affected by this current uh, devaluation uh, process. What we are actually asking for the Minister of Finance is to ensure that they try by all means to restore the salaries of, uh, of civil servants, to restore the payout pensions, to restore the value of pensions by almost the same magnitude of the, of the rate of devaluation. That is not an increase in salaries. But it is actually a restoration of where they were before the, the, the policy shift of devaluation on the 27th of, uh, of, 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 uh, of September. So I therefore wish to encourage government to ensure that they try by all means to protect the vulnerable people of our society. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, commenting on this growing economic crisis, President Nelson Chamisa today said that his government will put in place all necessary measures that allow business to grow and operate without fear of imminent economic collapse. He said that his leadership will be excellent on integrity, respect, accountability, and respecting rule of law. It has been 109 days since Senator Jameson Timber and 64 activists from Citizens Coalition for Change, CCC, were illegally arrested, causing anger among human rights groups and the public. Citizens are upset that serious criminals like rapists, murderers, and fraudsters are mostly released on bail while innocent activists arrested during the day of of the African child celebrations on June 16 are still denied bail. Many believe the judicial system is corrupt and biased against opposition members. Meanwhile, Honorable Chibaya's bail hearing was yesterday postponed to today. In Chipinge, was 25 of the Mutema Musikawano constituency ZANU-PF is adjudged a solar project 
that was donated by the UK Development Fund and UNDP. Zanupiev is now presenting the official opening ceremony held today as if they were the donors. The Mutema Musikawanu community has condemned this, urging ZANU-PF and its leadership to build projects using the country's natural resources. Let's hear more from a community leader speaking. Good evening, citizens, change radio listeners, the international community. This is what is happening in Mutema Musikawanu. ZANPF is trying to hijack all what is happening here, all the donors who are donating food relief, who are donating solarization of communities. The UNDP has donated solar, uh, solar system at Hakwata uh, uh, School. And now today, Munangoga was supposed to be here, but he sent a minister, uh, Mike Gata, who is then the MP for Mutema Muskawan. They are now trying to hijack as if it is Zanu who has who has uh, donated that or who has installed all that. Yet it is a donor. Now the people of Akwata they are aware of that, and because this 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 organization this UNDP this project started in 2021, and now it has been established. It has been completed. Now they brought everyone from Harare, Blawayo, Mutari, with buses written Sadak, a chairperson, Sadak, Zubko buses, over 50 Zubko buses, and some are written Sadak, Sadak, Sadak. Pictures will, uh, will be sent on social media. This is not uh, the right uh, uh, thing that Zan PF is trying to do. What is they are trying to do? They are trying to capitalize this, 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 this solarization by donors. And they are trying to manipulate Chipinge cluster as a whole. Remember, it is only Chipinge South which has remained in opposition. Central East and Mutemans Khan, they stole the elections. Now they are trying to hoodwink the whole the cluster so that it become a, a, a ZANU PF area. But the people in Mutema Muskan, they are firm. They know what they are doing. They've been attending. Some have been there today, but they cannot win their, 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 their trust and their hope on Nelson Chamisa. Come Nelson Chamisa, come election day, people, they know where they will vote for. And they are saying that this solarization is a good idea and it is welcomed by the citizens by the people of Hakwata because they know that they will get uh, uh, lights so that if elections will be run during the night, they will be there. <laughs> so that is what is happening here in Temamskan. Today, Munangagwa was supposed to be here, but it failed. Maybe it is because of the, that uh, he, 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 he didn't want to be humiliated because he cannot, not, he, he cannot divert what does not belong to Zanpiev. He couldn't do that. And the people, we are firm here. We know that this is Siapea in Mtema Mskona. Zimbabwe is facing a serious drought and a growing economic crisis like the one in 2008. The currency, the ZIG, is losing value quickly, causing many business to shut down. To help families in need, a new food relief program will be started, inspired by President Nelson Chamisa. Valentine Zinongwe is proud to support this important initiative with his colleagues. Change Radio talked to Valentine Zinongwe. Let's hear him speak. In Gweru, a concerning report from the National AIDS Council, NAC, reveals that Approximately 60% of the city's 3,500 registered sex workers are living with HIV. Strive Masiwa, the founder of Econet Group and a notable Zimbabwean businessman, received the W.E.B. Du Bois Medal at Harvard University on October 1, 2024, 
honoring his contributions to African history and culture. Let's hear more details from our reporter. Sir Masio was among eight distinguished recipients recognized for their commitment to social justice, alongside figures like Spike Lee and Levar Barton. Masio is also known for his philanthropic efforts through the Higher Life Foundation, which has provided scholarships to over 300,000 African youth, and for his role as the African Union Special Envoy for COVID-19. His achievements in agriculture and food security have earned him the Norman E. Ballock World Food Prize Medallion. Masiwa resides in the UK and holds a BSc in Engineering from Cardiff University along with honorary doctorates from Yale and Nelson Mandela University. Reporting for Change Radio, Bulawayo. Uh, this is Mataham Kamlandaba. Two boys aged six and seven tragically suffocated in a parked car during a church service in Rua on Sunday. Patson Gukwe and Tanyara Zoslasela were left in a red Honda Fit while their guardian Paul Sasela Makechem attended a service at Redemption International Church. After initially participating in Sunday school, the boys returned to the vehicle and were later found unresponsive hours later. While the cause of their entrapment remains unclear, Harare police are investigating the incident as a sudden death case. The children were taken to a nearby medical center but were pronounced dead. In international news, a tragic bus accident in Thailand has resulted in the death of 20 children and 3 teachers. The bus returning from a school trip crashed into a concrete barrier on a highway just north of Bangkok, reportedly due to a front tire burst that caused the driver to lose control. The vehicle then caught fire, trapping many passengers inside as smoke billowed into the sky. To end the news, here are the headlines once again. President Chamisa calls for complete Zimbabwe's transformation. Citizens say Munangawa State of Nation address SONA is empty as it does not address the country's problems. Citizens upset with selective treatment of law as the innocent Avondale 64 are still denied bail. That concludes this news bulletin. Thank you for listening. From myself, Barbara, and the entire team at Change Radio, have a good night.